answer. Because you are that, you are capable. You are gifted and you are so unique. All of the things that you may hate about yourself are your strengths. It's okay to be soft. It's okay to be opinionated. It's okay to be different. And it's so okay to just be The world awaits to receive you. I'm going to move on to another story that we actually went over last week that was very hurtful, which was the death of Tyree Nicholson. So we're going to follow back up through. And again, I want to send love and peace and blessings to his family. This is Tyree Nicholson's grandmother who has, you know, some things to say, and she's, she's really hurt. So I think we should give her the time and respect. Mm. Killing our babies for nothing. In a Channel 2 Action News exclusive, we're hearing from the grandmother of Tyree Nichols. She lives here in Metro Atlanta now, and this is the first time she's speaking out since her grandson's death. Channel 2's Audrey Washington live in Midtown Atlanta, and Audrey, the grandmother told you she can't bear to even watch that mm. police body cam video. Right. She still has not seen that video in its entirety, only short clips on the news. But she told me today that she is coming forward for the first time because she wants people to know exactly who her son Tyree, her grandson Tyree, was. It said to grandma from Ty, age 13. This is all Miss Johnny LaRae Honeycutt has left, memories and old pictures of her grandson, Tyree Nichols. She says at times, the grief is overwhelming. <sighs> I'm sorry. In January, 29-year-old Tyree Nichols died after Memphis police officers beat him during a traffic stop. Oh. Following the release of the police body cam video and after officials charged five officers involved with murder, protests broke out across the nation and here in Metro Atlanta. Miss Honeycutt says she can't bear to watch the entire video. She's only seen one still image. You can tell when that child is worried and he was scared. I looked in his eye and I saw what he was saying. Without him saying a word. He said, God save me. Help me. Yep. What did I do? Thursday inside her Metro Atlanta home, I asked Miss Honeycutt what message she had for the officers seen in the video. Killing our baby for nothing. My baby was a skateboarder. He worked at FedEx. He had the best mother and stepfather in the world. Why would you want to do that to him? Next, Tyree Nichols' grandmother plans to turn her pain into purpose. Mm. She wants other grandparents of grandchildren who died during similar police interactions to take their heartbreak and voices to lawmakers in Washington. We need to come down on Washington, D.C. As for what she wants to say to her grandson... You know you got a family that loves you and everything is going to be... Just fine. You don't have to worry about these people here anymore. Oh, I'm going to say God rest his soul. God rest his soul. And I pray that his grandmother and his family has closure. I mean, it hurts. And they're not going to get closure yet. But I will want to, I do want to add some things to this. First and foremost, we know that there's two more officers that we need to be having going down. We just made an update that the first white officer has been charged and lost his job, foundingly, allegedly, and there's still one more anonymous officer. So the people who have their boots on the ground, keep doing what you do, keep pushing and pushing, because it's not just black on black. It's literally a systematic thing. And that, and. As I mentioned, and I hope you did get a chance to listen to our last clip that we released on Hood Politics that talked about the Black Boule. 
and some of the systems that set up against us. Now, I'm not saying that these young men are part of the Black Boule, but I will say that when you they when people are part of organizations like Kalafataha, I'm not saying the right name, they become acclimated to a certain status, behavior, and the way that people are supposed to treat them and do things for them. People become very vindictive these days. You can see on different calibers that these um, entities are on, and they end up doing tragic things like this. So it's not just a black on black thing. It's literally a um, gang, gang, gang thing. We talking about the gang mentality. And this was a gang of officers that went against this man. Whatever the situation was, they said, we try to say is a woman, is that? No, this gang was so liberated, alleged, I'm gonna call them a gang, so liberated in their practices that they would do this if on, on, with their body cams on, because they know it's on, in front of everybody at nighttime and feel like they were going to get away with it. This is a system thing. But before we move on, I, what I really don't agree with is totally taking it to Washington. Because the problem starts at si inside of that police department. It starts in the community, in the neighborhood. It starts with us policing our own neighborhood and policing the police. Allegedly, I'm saying things that they may not want me to say, but we're going to say it. Because when they kept saying, defund the police, defund, I'm like, oh, Lord. We should have reallocated money to programs that was going to allow the community to play a role in the decisions that's made on the police department, how the police are trained in certain guidelines they're supposed to follow. You can put federal guidelines in order, but then if they don't trickle down the way they're supposed to, and they're not being implemented on the state level, on the county level, what does it matter? We're going to just be having, uh, how are we going to say, um, be free on in terms but not free to subjectiveness. Do you understand how bills can be written? Policies could be written. And it's because the will of man and the heart of man is going to implement it or not. So we have to be boots on the ground. That's the only thing I really wanted to just highlight because we, we always say the government, go get the government. I understand because we pay our taxes, but you already know if you're not seeing the constant pattern, I think you may want to evaluate your approach to getting things done because pushing the button ain't totally working. No disrespect. You got to know when to vote, what level to vote, not just for the president. You need things on a local level because when it hit the fan, you won't have a, uh, somebody like DeSanta <laughs> tearing up shit. They set us up after the cold. They set us up, y'all. Georgia and Florida set us up. We're going to talk about this because during the C-19, they were so free. We were so free out here. Everybody kept coming to Georgia. Everybody coming to Florida. And good God, the laws have changed. Good God, the law has changed. So this was just an update. One man encountered with Memphis PD Scorpion unit. And we're going to listen to his account before we move on. Talk about the law has changed. This is not new to these people. They've been empowered. Oh my God. I don't even want to show. I'm scared to show, show this stuff. Uh, let's see. Let's see what they're real about. Okay. He ain't do nothing. All right. Let's see. Let's see if we don't get a parent advisory tonight. We're going to listen to this. Um, a gentleman who want to talk about the Memphis PD Scorpio unit. Here, here is all. Cornell McKinney had a run-in with the same Scorpion unit just four days before the five men beat Tyree Nichols. Mm -mm. And their approach with him was just as aggressive. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Okay, we about to... Yeah, because I know we're going to end up getting censored. What I'm going to do, I think I'm going to have to leave that link for y'all. Yeah, I know I'm going to leave all the links. This is from B Black to the Block respect to them that they were able to find this information and let me see can i share just a little bit of this video oh my god oh i don't want to get in trouble they had their guns on 
Okay. Cornell was about six miles from where Tyree was brutally beaten. While sitting in his friend's car waiting to grab a pizza, they were boxed in. We're sitting right here in the See? lot. We were blocked in by several unmarked cars. Um, I kept asking what, I was, what, what was going on as I got pulled out the car at gunpoint. Thinking he was being robbed, Cornell says the masked men never identified themselves as police, but put him in the back of a car. They actually had to turn all the way around for me to actually read that, that they was with the Scorpion unit. They had their guns on me. Cornell was about six. McKinney had. They had their guns on me. Corn <laughs> all right. So y'all heard it here. Exactly what I was saying. This was behavior that these people were empowered to do. So this is not a first time. This may have not been the second time or the third time. This gentleman said literally this was just a couple of weeks before this happened to Tyree Nichols. So this was a behavior of these officers. And this is why we have to, one, understand our law and our right and what units are being actually constructed on a, on a, on a county level. Because they're, they're constructing units based on allegedly our needs, okay? And they're saying that our needs are... Um, we need gang unit task force. We need drug unit task force. But what skills do they have? What training are they having? The, oh, excuse me. It feels like something in my nose. It feels, I mean, it seems like they're coming in with a level of aggression that's way beyond warrant. Okay. I know fear can be a, a factor in this where someone fear will make them become more aggressive as a self-defense mechanism. But it's you as an officer, if you have any fear in your heart and that's how you got to act to, to function on your job, you should quit. Would you like to learn a brand new and innovative way to invest your extra money that has a low barrier to entry and low competition? What if I told you that it is a guaranteed method to get up to 18 to 20% return on your investment? Tax lien and deed purchasing is the only way to get into the real estate market through the back door. No credit and no loans needed. This method isn't commonly taught and therefore the competition is very low for now. Put together a 14 hour info packed course, which will teach you everything you'll need to know to get started. Learn at your own pace, step-by-step -step guided video and aids to start you on the TLC deed investment process. The course offers many learning tools for new investors, helping ensure you safely invest in tax liens and deeds. Contact us today and join the buyback team.